Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So this is part four, not three, of drawing your guys' OCs in my style for the month of December. So we are going to start off with an OC that I think is kind of more up my alley and kind of more of my aesthetic. So we're gonna start off with the OC Nagisa from Miricat0 underscore or Miricato underscore. So thank you again for submitting your OC. And I thought this OC was very much like a character that I find a little bit more easier to draw just because I tend to like drawing a lot softer characters, um, kind of like brighter color palettes, but also just the general aesthetic is just kind of more up my alley anyways. Not only that, the color palette in general, I like the combination of kind of like a soft blue and kind of like a muted soft kind of brown color, so I think it's really cute together. So in terms of the drawing process, as usual, I am going to be starting off with kind of my larger painting brush and kind of blocking in a very general, simple pose. After that, I will lower the opacity of that layer. We'll make a new layer on top of that and start off with kind of our cleaner sketch. So that way I don't really have to worry too, too much about certain guidelines so I can kind of keep things a little bit more contained in, within the canvas with prior knowledge of how I want the composition to look like. But usually for these ones, I'm keeping them very simple. A lot of them are more or less kind of like bust up kind of drawings of the characters so it's nothing too too complicated and I know last week I believe I said that I was gonna do a few more rather than just the two that I did like last time but for today I am going to be still doing two kind of more or less full colored ones and kind of render to I guess like about 80% is what I probably would consider them in terms of how finished they are but to kind of include a few more OCs in today's video. I think for the last third of the video, I will be including three sketches of OCs that did not have any color, so that were done more or less like traditionally, so that they also get an opportunity to be drawn. Just because I find usually I gravitate towards drawing characters that are kind of like already fully colored or have like some sort of color palette associated with the character but I know some people don't have like let's say digital tools or they don't color their stuff and post it so I did choose a few that were just purely pencil sketches as well but for this OC like I said it was a little bit more which i hate to say this it was kind of more of a warm-up piece for myself because i have not been doing a lot of digital art recently in terms of like doing finished pieces i'm hoping to really kick my butt into gear for the last like week and a half of december that we kind of have left to kind of finish up at least four pieces because i have three kind of work in progresses that are in the rendering phase so maybe i'll do another video where i'll do a, like a keep me company while i finish another three artwork kind of video because i really need to push myself to finish those three pieces but hopefully saturday's video will also be more or less like a finished piece as well Okay, so back to kind of the process of drawing this character. This character does have like really cute circle rimmed glasses or very like circular lenses, but I did not want to really botch up the face at this point. So I did do the glasses on a separate layer on top of this current sketch. So once I add in the color and kind of like spruce things up a little bit, I'll end up merging that layer down to the rest of everything so we can render everything at once uh, but other than that i think the sketch is more or less finished i will end up kind of fixing the hands a little bit because they turned out a lot smaller <laughs> for some reason um, but other than that i did do a background which has been very similar and kind of consistent with the other ones that i've been doing more recently for these also apologies for the exposure it will go down once we fill in kind of like the base color for the character but for the background, I've been more or less doing kind of like solid fill colors in kind of like a rectangular format and then adding in some kind of white grid or a colored grid to the background to kind of give it a little bit more of a pattern so it's a little bit less boring, but it's a little bit easier than me doing a full blown background for every character just because I want to be able to consistently draw as many as I can throughout the rest of this month. By the way, I still have one more week left of doing the drawing your OCs in my style, so that'll be part five, and that'll be kind of the end of that for this year. And then maybe I'll revisit the kind of tag once again a little bit later next year. But for, hmm, I'm not exactly sure how much time I will have to be able to draw as many characters as I can for the last part, but we'll see if I can tackle that in a more timely manner so we can do more than two 
kind of for like the finale of the drawing your character series for the month of december so thank you again for you guys uh, kind of helping me out and submitting your OCs for me to draw and I'm hopefully going to be doing more next year Maybe not exactly like in this format where I'm doing one every week But uh, I'll try to do it a little bit more frequently next year kind of spacing it out every so often So after I did do the base layer for the character Which is basically me blocking in the entirety of the character in one solid color I then kind of alpha lock that layer so that I can kind of keep all my colors within the blocked out color uh, phase. So after that, I usually make that kind of blocked out color more or less the skin tone so we can go ahead and start to shade, add highlights, and kind of add the appropriate colors to the skin tone before moving on to the eyes. And then after that, I'll move on to the hair, which you saw me do very simply this time because I did not really have any dramatic lighting for this one. After that, I'll move on to the clothing. But usually when I work section by section like this, I'm trying my best to keep in mind of the shadows and the highlights and like the lighting source and everything. So for the most part, I'm not doing dramatic lighting, but I am putting a little bit more shadows on the left side, if anything. I mentioned earlier also that the hands looked a little bit too small, so right now I'm using the liquify tool to kind of buff it out a little bit by making them a little bit larger. Usually I would just resize it, but, but because it was kind of interacting with the stem of the rose, I was not really willing to just resize it and then kind of resketch the stem. So I just used the liquify tool to kind of budge it a little bit so it appears a little bit larger rather than giving the OC very tiny, tiny hands. I also mentioned earlier that I'm kind of treating this one a little bit as a warm up, And the reason being is that like I mentioned, I am feeling a little bit, I don't know, in this weird stage where I don't really want to finish any of my drawings. I've been loving sketching more recently, either in my sketchbook or I guess you guys would have seen that I've been playing around with alcohol markers more often, but I've been just having fun doing non-finished art for a lot of like my time, especially in the month of December. So I definitely needed something to kind of like kick me back into finishing a drawing. So even though this one's not going to be fully rendered to like what I would consider 100%, I think it was a good introduction back into, you know, taking my time to render, kind of coloring things how I like to usually color things. And then for the second one for today is going to be more of a complicated character design, I guess, in a way. It's a little bit more detailed, a little bit less of my uh, usual aesthetic that I like to keep up with or like I like to gravitate towards if that makes sense but talking about like OCs I don't know I I'm not the type to continuously make like a humongous amount of OCs and then have like a whole backlog I know a lot of people are like this and I know some people are like me where you only have like maybe five ish OCs less than 10 kind of ish because before I used to have like let's say 12 to 14 OCs but I really drew a lot of them and even though I have like five OCs that I technically have for Masaki's universe or like his story setting I don't draw a lot of them too often but there is like two ish characters that I would like to make that are I don't know if I'm going to make them kind of part of Masaki's universe or I'm going to make them two separate characters I want I don't know, uh, like a really fluffy, kind of more wavy haired character for like a male and I want it to have dark hair and potentially more of a soft aesthetic as usual, but I don't want it to look too much like Wanu, so I'm gonna, I don't know if I'll make it into a video, but I want to do a little bit of kind of like brainstorming and planning to find the aesthetic that I want for the OC. And then the other one is an OC that I've shown a little bit here and there in terms of using her as like a testing thing for like different mediums or like alcohol marker videos and stuff. It's just basically a girl with black hair, very kind of like neutral almost black eyes and then very kind of either white clothing aesthetic or I want to make her kind of more neutral colored or like black or like one or the other because I want to use her as kind of like almost like a blank canvas for everything but I like the aesthetic of making everything fairly neutral so I'll kind of play around with the idea because I feel like both of those characters could fall into one character so like I might just make it into the one guy OC where he kind of has more of voluminous ish hair or fluffier hair i just i think i want a character with messier hair is probably what i want 
Okay, so enough rambling. This is kind of where I'm at with the character. I went ahead and duplicated the character, set it to multiply, and then alpha locked it, and then kind of dropped in a solid color to kind of create a very simple shadow. And that's basically it kind of for the finishing touches on the background. Now, before I forget and move on, I did have to remember to put a little bit of the glass or the glare into the glasses. So I filled in the entire glasses with white. I'm using the eraser to kind of erase a little bit to kind of create it a little bit more of a hazy-ish look. Then after that, another new layer. I'll quickly put in the glare little marks onto the glasses and then we can erase around it to kind of clean it up. And that's basically it for the glasses. So I'll leave you guys with the time lapse and we can come back for the second OC. So hopefully I didn't butcher your OC too too much, but let's move on to the next one. So this pretty OC is by Fairy of Friendship, who has this really beautiful OC but I was a little bit intimidated but like intrigued by the color combination but also just like the intensity of the color. So even though I like bright colors, there is sometimes certain colors in the very kind of more saturated realm where I feel like I don't really touch a lot and that tends to be either very saturated yellowy greens or just like I guess like I think it's just greens. It's that kind of I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's called chartreuse. You can probably look it up how to pronounce it and I probably should after I do this voiceover but that kind of green does intimidate me sometimes because I'm always wary on how to shade such a bright color without muting it too much so hopefully today's attempt will be an okay attempt in terms of trying to capture your overall color palette that you have for this OC. I also really like the design because the horns are a very interesting I guess like shape for all four of the horns, but also the scales on the character I actually really liked. I don't think I drew them super great. I probably should have pulled up a reference of actual like uh, reptile scales so that I could get a better idea. So I do apologize that they might look a little funky. And I would have liked it if I was able to make it look like it's appearing from the skin a little bit more like how they had their character done rather than how I did it where it kind of looks like the scales are just slapped onto the character. I also find it funny that sometimes when I choose certain characters for these drawing your OCs in my style videos, I don't really pay attention about certain details until I actually get to the drawing portion of the characters. So while working on this one in particular, I did not realize the kind of longer elf ears for the character. I really do like the aesthetic for it, but I was not prepared to draw it. So I feel like when I tilted the head of the character, I wasn't thinking too much about like what's going to be protruding from the head. So the ears are, and then later on, you're going to see that the horns are going to get cut off, but I'm going to slowly kind of shrink and shift the character little by little and kind of put the character closer to the right side of the canvas so that I could let the character not be cut off in such a weird way, especially for a kind of like a bust up headshot kind of portrait of a character. I feel like things should be a little bit more contained and I don't really mind if things like the, I guess like the rest of the chest or the shoulders are kind of cut off. I kind of want things like the face or anything on top of the head to be not chopped off at a weird angle just because it's not fitting into the canvas properly. I did assume something about the character, which is the hair. So I believe the hair of the character, it's kind of like a mid-length, kind of shoulder length type of hair, but I believe there might be a ponytail of some sort. So hopefully that is correct and it's tied up by the kind of like brighter green kind of color for a ribbon. So hopefully that is correct. I do like how I did the hands for this character and not gonna lie, the hand that's kind of like closer to the character's chest was how I initially wanted to do the hand for Argenti if you watched Monday's video because I wanted it to be more directed onto touching his chest rather than like floating in front of him. I think the angle of this one makes a little bit more sense so it looks a little bit more dainty or a little bit more elegant which is what I wanted so you know, it's sometimes it's just trial and error. My first attempt of doing it traditionally with Argenti did not work out or translate very well. So I'm glad this one did. 
but let's move on with the process. So after I did the sketch, I duplicated it, made one of them to be set to multiply, and then I kept the second one kind of as a backup. And it's kind of just hidden for now because I'm not gonna need it. I'm only gonna need it if I really do need kind of to restart at some point. After that, we fill in the character kind of with a base color all over so that we can kind of keep all of our colors contained within this kind of one color shape, I guess, by using alpha lock. After that, because it's already the base color of the skin tone, I'm going ahead and just shading everything in. Also, I'm shading as much of the skin as I can right now and that's including the kind of like exposed I guess like chest area collarbone to chest area bust I guess area and the reason being is that I believe the character has some kind of mesh material or some kind of more see-through kind of like sheerness to the fabric so I'm going to be using the multiply layer a little bit later to place that on top of the kind of little chest area so that we can kind of change it to the appropriate color and it'll look a little bit more translucent compared to if I were just to color it on the spot, which is totally fine too, but this makes it a little bit easier because it kind of takes in consideration of what was underneath, including like my shadows and highlights, if there are any. But after that, uh, I also noticed that the character has some really pretty, kind of like very vibrant, almost, is this considered magenta? Maybe kind of like a pinkish, a very intense kind of pink eye color, which is kind of where I brought out the background color a little bit. I didn't want it to be as intense, but I try to match the background color to the character's aesthetic as much as I can or think of the color combination that would better suit the main color of the character. So in this case, I decided to do black and kind of like a mid-tone, kind of reddish pinkish color. And the black is kind of pulled from the right hand, the one that's kind of like going up towards his face and playing with his hair because it's black and I wanted it to be kind of throughout the entire piece. So because his hand on the right side of the canvas is up and it is kind of only present there, I decided to put only the black on the left side to kind of balance it out just a little bit so it doesn't look a little bit too out of place, if anything. But then after all of that is done, I'm basically on the cleanup and rendering phase, which I feel like this one needs it a little bit more compared to the other one, just because the color aesthetic in certain areas, especially like, let's say the hair and some parts of, I guess like the clothing, or even that more of that chartreuse kind of color, it's just very light. So oftentimes when I'm doing the coloring of kind of like certain areas, I don't really mind what the color of the line art is at the time or let my line art, I guess the sketch, I usually change that after I finished coloring everything so it's a little bit more appropriate but I tend to leave kind of like intensifying or trying to make certain areas kind of pop a little bit more once I start doing the rendering and cleanup phase. So oftentimes if there's like corners and hair, I would try my best to darken it up to the point where it's a little bit more poppy so it's a little bit more bold and very noticeable it kind of helps a little bit with creating depth as well but that's what I usually do like at the kind of like final step when I'm doing the rendering portion just because to me it makes sense and it allows me to just like you know color everything what I think is more appropriate without having to worry about the lines at the moment but for the most part whenever I do like the coloring and rendering kind of phase, it's mostly me doing the cleanup. So there's a lot of straggly lines here and there, there's some colors that I feel like maybe need a better transition, or maybe they're a little bit too harsh, or I want to add some other kind of like adjacent colors near the area to the same object. So let's say I didn't want the hair to be too neutral, I could add a little bit more warmth from either the skin, or I can pull it from kind of like that pinky red in the background, or in this case, I mostly pull a lot more of the color from the green so that's a lot from either from the bow or the chartreuse color and kind of place it into let's say the hair or certain areas like that so that it's a little bit less flat but also there's a little bit of that color shifting or like hue shift inside certain areas like the clothing and the hair and the eyes a little bit of the skin tone here and there but for the most part, this is what the finished OC looks like. I know it went by quite quickly, uh, but I'll come back and talk about the last three sketches. So those 
those were the two OCs that I did for today's session, which are the kind of more or less finished colored versions of people's OCs. But I am deciding to do three more kind of quicker ones done with the 6B pencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another new canvas, so the same 5x7. I'm going to go ahead and pull out the 6B pencil as well as the brush that I'm going to be using. And I've set the color of my sketch to be a very, very dark gray. Not quite black, but just fairly dark gray. So the OC that we're doing today is Nicholas from Straw B or straw bx so thank you again for submitting your oc and this oc was either done in pencil or ballpoint pen i believe so i kind of was trying my best to find any ocs that did not have a significant amount of color so a lot of characters or ocs that were submitted that were done usually like in their sketchbook or something like that which is done usually in pencil or pen were the ones that i was trying to look for so that i could do a few that were more monochromatic and or done with the 6B pencil because that way it will be easier to translate the character to something similar so I don't have to really guess colors or anything like that. So hopefully the OCs turn out somewhat-ish similar to the person's OCs as well. Now I was scared to draw the hairstyle for this character a little bit because one thing I really like about this person's style is the kind of like simplicity or the way how you group your hair into chunks. So because I tend to do a little bit more of like flowy bits or I like doing kind of like strands, it's a little bit harder for me to, if you like, capture the same kind of body of hair that your OC has compared to mine. So I feel like mine looks a little funny compared to yours. I think yours looks a little bit more naturally placed for the hairstyle for the character, but mine looks a little bit like as if there's two portions of the hair that was done differently. But hopefully when I add a little bit of shading here and there, it kind of ties things a little bit together. But you can see that when I'm doing the kind of little pencil sketches, I am darkening certain areas before I'm doing any sort of shading minus the eyes just because it makes it a little bit easier for me to see uh, where I am shading and it doesn't get lost with everything else. Also, I didn't really show it but I tried my best to draw both of the eyes for the character. I selected the eye where it was kind of behind the hair and lightly erased it so that it looks like it appears behind the hair similar to how the person drew uh, their character Nicholas. So hopefully you enjoy this little sketch. And let's move on to the next OC since these are fairly quick. So the next OC is is Natsuki from Tetniko. Tetni Cow. So thank you again for submitting your OC. And I feel like this one was a little bit difficult for me to draw because uh, I did not know how to approach the hair in terms of like how voluminous that I wanted to draw it. So I might come out a little bit derpy. I do apologize about that. But I really, 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 really enjoy how cute the aesthetic of this character is. She just seems so fluffy and very soft. So I really wanted to draw her. And I think she has like that very cute bubbly energy to her her which I think is very adorable. Don't mind the face at this point. Sometimes when I'm sketching and because I do these kind of quickly I don't notice things right away so we're gonna shuffle that eye a little bit over a little bit later uh, because there's a little bit too big of a gap between the eyes at this point so not only does she look like she's looking a little bit kind of like in different directions the eyes are just way too far apart but other than that I just have been really enjoying sketching recently so I feel like I needed to do a kind of like rough sketch version of drawing your guys' OCs in my style just because I love working with the 6B pencil on Procreate. It's just fun and I do like building up value slowly and the difference between this and kind of working in your sketchbook is that you don't really have to worry about smudging if, if maybe you worked on one pe like place on the sketch a little bit more than the rest and your hand kind of just glides over. But the thing I like about working traditionally is that I can kind of like work at a different size. I feel like every time I sketch like this, this in Procreate, I tend to zoom in a heck of a lot, which might also lend to why I tend to do a lot of detail whenever I do kind of like pencil sketches in Procreate, but I feel like it's a little bit looser when I do it in my sketchbook, but then sometimes I still render it to the same degree. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this OC. I'm adding a little bit of texture to the hair and kind of like indication where the hair shine would be. But yeah, this is their OC Natsuki. So thank you again to Tetni Cow for submitting your OC. So we'll move on to the next one fairly shortly. So 
last but not least, we have this OC Ren by Rhea Beam. So thank you for submitting your OC. And let's do another kind of quick sketch of this person's OC Ren. So for this one, I think this was probably one of the quickest ones that I did. They all ranged anywhere between, I think, 18 to 30 minutes depending on if I was watching something in the background like I was for the for the first one But I think this one if I tried to export the I think the time lapse for it I don't remember if it's this one specifically, but it said that I could only export the original Time lapse, not the 30 second one. So I'm assuming it was probably close enough to 30 seconds that it did not have a difference. So I had to download the original rather than the 30 second one, anyways. So it just tells me that I probably worked on this quite quickly for the most part. But that's like another thing I really like about just sketching in general because I don't really have to put like several hours into it if I don't want to. It could be just literally half an hour sketching and then I could literally throw it into my many, many, many whips that I have in my Procreate gallery. But uh, let's talk about the OC a little bit. So the hairstyle is actually very cute and I do like the little cuff piercing on the one side of the ear. I do apologize that I end up covering it a lot more. So I feel like it's just not as present in the entirety of the piece compared to I guess like in your piece where you can kind of tell it's a piercing, mine just gets cut off at a weird point. But I definitely really like the shape of the hair for this one too. It's kind of like round and cute, but it's like sectioned off really nicely. So it was a little bit easier for me to interpret the hair, but also I really like the fact that I think on the side portions that kind of frame his face, it's a little bit darker. So I did have a lot of fun just adding a little bit more of that kind of value to it so that we can have a little bit of kind of like visual interest in the hair as well because I'm always nervous that I'm drawing your guys's characters too plainly I guess because sometimes your guys's OCs like I feel like for some people especially their OCs stand out when they draw their OCs but I feel like my interpretation sometimes I feel it makes the character look a little bland so hopefully I didn't butcher your character too much because I really do like looking at other people's traditional sketches like especially so hopefully I could translate your OC kind of appropriately to my style if anything so yeah that's kind of the end of the last one we'll go through a quick time-lapse replay and I think that's it for the five different OCs that I drew for today's video So I'm gonna do a quick overview of the drawings that we did for today's video. So starting off with this one instead, and we'll work our way backwards. And then this is the second sketch, our first sketch, and then we had the second kind of full render, and then the second render. So thank you guys again for submitting your OCs, and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!